Freelancing is the only reliable way of making money online wherein you are not required to spend money up front. Now, I want you to listen to me very well. I did not say freelancing is the only way. I said it is the only reliable way of making money online wherein you are not required to spend any money online to do it. So basically, there are many platforms online wherein you can go and sell your skills. The only thing you are required of when it comes to freelancing is for you to have a skill that, um, that people will need, a skill that people will be willing to pay money for you to work for them. That's the only thing that is required of you. So if you have any skill, and when I'm talking of skills, I'm not talking about you having like some kind of expert, expert level skills. You can just have a, sim a simple skill as knowing how to answer an email, organize a calendar, and responding to customers. Things like that. Even data entry on Excel sheets. That is a skill if you have it. Even typing, if you are someone who has, who has like high speed, you can type very fast. You know how to type without looking at your keyboard. That can also be a skill that you can sell to clients. People will pay you money. Now, my point is this. Freelancing is the only thing you, have, you can do online wherein you don't need to spend any upfront cost. You just need to go to a platform and sign up. So if you are new to this channel, my name is Jessica Ma. I am a full-time Upwork freelancer. So this is day two of the mentorship program. Basically, I'm providing free mentorship for people that want to begin their, their career as a freelancer. So if you want to create a business online, one way you can start is by becoming a freelancer. And then you can then move from there and establish another business because most other side hustles that are online require you to spend some upfront cash. But with freelancing, you are only required to sell your expertise. Now, what are we going to do today? which is day two. So in day two today, we are going to look at how to set yourself up for success. In day one, we talked about, like we gave an overview of what is freelancing and what the um, Upwork platform looks like, what are the things that you need to consider, the psychology of the platform, right? Today, we are going to look at how do you really set yourself up to become successful on Upwork? Now, I'm very specific. I don't teach um different things or i don't teach different platforms i only teach people on how to become a freelancer on upwork however some of the things that we are talking about here you can use them for different other platforms like people per hour freelancers dot freelance freelancing i think it's freelance.com and there are other platforms even fiverr so you can use some of those skills to um, um you can apply some of those skills to those platforms that's fine. But what I'm teaching is Upwork because that's where I'm working and that's where I, am, I have like um, a, a wealth of experience in and some of those things can also be applied in other platforms. All right. So today we are going to look at um, three um, things. Number one is um, how do you select a niche? Number two is your account, your account on Upwork. How do you set it up for success? And number three, is um, portfolio. So we're going to look at um, how do you set up a winning portfolio. All right. So let's start with number one. Now, most people, when they come to, um, when it comes to freelancing, they just want to, um, you know, they take, they just, they want to do everything. And that is a mistake. You don't, you don't, you don't, um, you don't go into any platform and you think that you can do everything. Nobody knows how to do everything. All right. You only need to focus on a few things. And that's where this video comes in. Because I want to tell you how to select a niche. All right? So how do you choose a niche? So the first thing that you have to do is to look at yourself. You have to be very, very honest with yourself. That is, you look at yourself and say, okay, Jesse, you, you want to start as a freelancer. What? kind of skill set do you have so there are various ways there are various approaches that you can take 
So the first approach is for you to list the tools that you know how to use. All right. So it can be that your skill sets are tool based. That is, you have skill sets that are tied that are tied around tools. What do I mean by this? Say, for instance, you are somebody who is an expert in Excel. So your skill set is based on the Excel application or maybe um, 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 Google Drive or Google Sheets. So your expertise are based around that tool. Let's say, for instance, another example would be maybe you are a designer, but your expertise is on using Canva, which is a design tool. It's, by the way, it is a free tool, guys. You can go on Canva and you, start, you can become a designer, somebody who can design thumbnails, you can design um, flyers, posters, and these things have been made very simple. And Canva is one way that you can begin. And it's so maybe your let me come back to the topic, please. I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to deviate. But what I'm saying is if your skill is tied down to Canva, then you can list Canva as one of those tools that you know how to use. So you can list all of the tools that you really know how to use, that you are convinced that if I am given a task related to this particular tool, I can use it and I'm, con I'm convenient. So let's take another example. Say you are somebody who can use Instagram. You can use TikTok very well. You know how to use um, LinkedIn. Maybe you know how to use Facebook. You are really an expert in this area, but you don't know it. And the funny thing is, most people are experts in certain areas. They don't even know. They don't appreciate their expertise in those tools. They tend to play it down. They think that, ah, this skill is not important. My friends, let me come closer. Every skill that you have, everything that you know how to do, if you can do it for someone, if somebody is spending time, energy, and effort to do it, that is a, monet a monetizable skill. That is a word that I actually came up with. I don't think it's a real word, monetizable. But <laughs> you understand my meaning, right? It is a skill that you can monetize. As long as somebody is spending time to do it, most people don't have time to set up their Facebook account. Most people don't have time to set up their Facebook page, their, their LinkedIn page, or Instagram, or X. They don't have time. So they need people to do it. So you have to list those tools that you have expertise in. That is the first approach. The second approach, it's for you to list um, your skill sets. So you know, maybe you know the definition of skill sets. So basically, let's say for, for me, as an example, I'll just use myself as an example. Maybe I am someone, I'm, some, I'm a product manager, right? Like my profession is product management. So I know how to collect, not just collect requirements, but elicit, elicitation. I, on, I, I do understand the, the psychology, the methods, the way of, getting requirements from a user, even when they did not say so, even the things that they are not saying, I know exactly how to collect that information. I have that expertise. I've done it for many years, so I know how to do it. All right? So that is a skill. Requirement elicitation is different from requirement gathering. So that's a skill that I have because I've done it. I have the experience. I've done it multiple times. Another thing that I know how to do is to transition, to transform um, ordinary requirement or a list of requirements into product requirements. Product requirements that have acceptance criteria. That is another skill that I, that I have. So if you look at this set of skills, I will list multiple sets of skills within the product management domain. All right? So you can do the same thing. Let's take another example. Say data entry. Say, for instance, I know how to type. I, I know how to type and I can type X amount of words in x amount of time in y amount of time rather so i can type x amount of words in y amount of time so i that's a skill that i have and also i can i can enter data in excel sheets i know how to manipulate data i know how to create graphs on excel sheets so i i list all of those things that i know how to do now if you can do that, you can look at yourself, you, you look at what you can do, including things like using your phone to do posts, to send posts, respond to posts, um, responding to um, 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 comments, and all of the, the, those things that are in between. Then, 
that is that is one method that is another method that's the second method so you can list all of the things that you are capable of doing now you have to be very careful here i am not saying you should list things that you know how to do i said list things that you know you are able to do all right you should be very specific here things that you have done before and you know that you are able to do it so that's the first step the second step is for you to list your level of expertise in each of those domains. Maybe, no, let me put that as the third step, I think. There is something, there is a gap. Actually, what I have is the second step is for you to list the level, but I want to go one more level before we can go to that level, okay? So um, now, what you need to, once you list this, your skill set, you have to group them under which um, um, category they belong. So what I mean by category is which um, 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 industry or which um, domain does these skills belong to? So let's say, for instance, if you know how to manipulate data on Excel, you know how to create and analyze data on it. It's basically within um, the, the Excel expertise, so like an Excel ex um, specialist or maybe a data entry specialist or data management or data analytics, right? It depends on how you want to tie, um, tie down that title or, uh, or how do you want to name it. But mostly, one of the things that you can do, you can go to Up, Upwork and see other people's profile, type Excel, and see how people actually list how the, 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 the title, the headlines that they give themselves, right, that have these similar skill sets. So it can be like data specialist in Excel or Excel specialist, something like that. Then for the example of um, product management, you can simply say um, product man management professional, product management specialist, something like that. So you can, you can put them under specific domains. So you list. So for the other example that I was talking about, um, where you create a Facebook page, you create a LinkedIn account, and so on and so forth, you can put it on a social, um, um, social media management or social media specialist. So you can put... You can categorize your skills under those domains. So you put them under each domain. All right. So once you do that, the next step is for you to look at social media specialists, um, Excel, um, Excel specialists, or product management specialists. You look at what is my level of knowledge. That is the, the next step. It's for you to assess yourself. And you have to be honest, guys. If you go and say you are an expert in this area, it means you can compete with the top-notch group. Know that you are not the only one. Like I said in day one, we talked that um, in, you have to know that the, the platform is competitive. So if the platform is competitive, it means there are other experts in that same field. Sorry. There are other experts in that same field that, um, will, that you will be competing with. So you have to be honest with yourself. So you have three levels. You have um, entry level. You have intermediates, and then you have expert levels, all right? So now you have to put, you have to be honest with yourself and say, okay, this particular domain, I have entry-level knowledge, which means, for instance, I can type, I can enter data into an Excel sheet, but my knowledge in terms of doing visualization is basic, right? So I would say this is entry-level. So somebody can hire me to do data entry. So I can take data from a particular document, enter it on an Excel sheet. But I cannot do things like micro and other advanced formulas on Excel, right? But I would say if I can do visualization properly and I can manipulate data, actually make it meaningful, filter data, do all of those advanced functionalities on Excel, I can say I have um, 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 intermediate skills. However, another level would be advanced or expert um, level wherein I can use my, I can actually write code to manipulate Excel. I can turn Excel into a database that performs certain functionality. If you enter certain data, it will give you certain results. If I can do that kind of level of manipulation and advanced programming of Excel, then I am an expert in Excel. So do you see how I have placed the different categories? So that's how you have to categorize your skills. So entry level, intermediate, and expert level. So if you say you are an expert, the client will expect you to, you don't need hand-holding. 
That's why they call it. They don't need to hold your hand to perform certain tasks. So when they say, if you say you are an expert, it means you can hit the road running. You can hit the ground running once you are hired. You know what to do. You are there to educate and guide the client on what to do because the client has hired an expert. If you are an entry level, the client understands that you need some amount of guidance. You need some hand holding. Do you see why it is important? So when the clients are requiring, even when they are posting jobs, they will put the requirement there, whether it is an entry level, intermediate, or expert that they are looking for. So you can apply to the appropriate level. That is the, the, the importance. So in summary, when it, comes to, when it comes to identifying your niche, you need to know your, your, the skill sets that you have, and you need to know the level at which you are as a person when it comes to that skill set. The next step on researching, on, on identifying your niche is looking for high demand um, 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 categories. So now let's say, for instance, I have a skill set. Let me see properly. Okay. So let's say I have a skill set um, that is not of high demand. Let's say, for instance, I am. I don't know which skill set is not of high. I don't want to give a skill set out there that's not of high demand. Anyway, um, so let's say you have a particular skill set or you are in a particular category that is not of high demand. And why? I, how do you even know? Because that's the first question. How do you know that this skill set that I have is of high demand? Is to go to Upwork. That's the simplest thing I can say. So when you select jobs, then you search for data entry. When you search for data entry, what will happen is that you will see all the list of data entry um, jobs. You can even go advanced and, and actually filter for data entry jobs. Then you see all the list of data entry jobs. Now, what should come to your mind is you should be able to see the number of jobs that are being posted on a daily basis. How many jobs are available on Upwork that are data entry jobs? And now, by the way, just to let you know that jobs on Upwork do expire. So when a job expires, Upwork removes it. So whatever you are going to see is something that is somebody is still looking out for, or maybe the job has not been hired for yet, or somebody still wants to hire for that job. So that's why you are seeing that job. So when you search, you will see the volume, the search volume for that particular job. So if you see that search volume, then that can tell you it's also a high demand um, um, area, right? So this is really important. Analyze the competitors. That's another thing. You have to analyze the competitors. How many people are looking for how many people, how many freelancers do we have that are, are data entry clerks, right? So that also can tell you that um, basically this area is also of high demand. But the real indicator that shows you that this particular um, 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 skill set is in high demand is the number of jobs that have been posted for that particular um, 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 skill set. So I'll be going to um, Upwork to show you how you can do some of these things. But let's go to the next um, topic. So the next thing that we, we, we have here on day two is creating your account. Now, guys, um, creating your account is very, very important. I'm basically sweating because I drank water. <laughs> so so <laughs> you can understand. I don't know why I'm, so, so I'm sweating. Anyways. So the next thing is creating your account. So now um, I'm not going to show you how to create an account on this video because I've already done it in another video. So what I'm going to do is to add a link to this video on a video wherein I went step by step from scratch. I don't want to repeat that, that video again. So I went step by step how you can go to Upwork, Google Upwork, create your account, set up all the parameters, everything that you need to on your profile, all right? And then set up your profile for the initial part. Now, however, I am going to mention some key things that I really want you to pay attention to. Number one is your photo. So for every profile on Upwork, there is a picture. In fact, Upwork does not allow you to submit your um, um, account creation. You, they don't allow you to submit your profile or submit um, your account if you don't have a professional photo, all right? So sometimes it just allows you, some people just take any picture and put it there. 
maybe they were in a party or something they were doing something and then they just take a picture and just attach it there that is a mistake now upwork is a professional place if i am looking for a, um, a freelancer i want to know that this freelancer is a professional is somebody who is an expert like i said you are coming there to give your expertise so you are considered to be an expert and you need to conduct and behave yourself and even appear as an expert you cannot just take any picture so what are the things that you have to look for first of all your face has to show you have to show your personality your face has the the, the, the client has to see your face and you need to have that smile proper smile you look professional if you can you can have a coat or you can have whatever you you have but make sure your face shows you look very professional you have that smiley face let your personality comes out in that photo because people can get attached to people just because they see you the way they see you they can interpret you by the way they see you so you have to appear very well so don't also put a picture that that you where you are very far bring yourself close so that they can see your face properly that is one thing the other thing is the of course i have talked about what you put in on put on something that makes sense the next thing on that creating your account that i really want to emphasize is the headline how you create your headline how do you create the headline for your for your um upwork account so what do i mean for, so when you look at my 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 account i put like um, um product manager project manager and agile team lead so basically i put an headline that stands out and also that has keywords so when a client is searching for agile team lead or they are searching for a product manager or they are searching for project manager i will be shown i'll pop up right so this is really important make sure your headline the way you write your headline makes sense all right so you can say things like for instance i am a data entry specialist right don't just write anything that you feel to write you have to write something that is professional and one way you can learn is to look for profiles on the platform for other people that are within your same domain within the domain that you want to um, come in as a freelancer look at the way they have written them. don't just look for any other people look for people that are doing well on the platform that are making money on the platform how have they written their headline there is nothing wrong for you to create a method on how to create that your headline so that you stand out. That's another thing that I wanted to mention when it comes to creating your account. The other thing is to create a compelling bio. This one also, I have um, created a video where I explain how to write your write up, basically your profile, where you have this long write up. I'm going to show you soon. On, I'm going to the um, 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 computer and I will show you some of these things that i'm talking about but i just wanted to explain it now this bio there is also another video that i will also attach to this particular um video so that, and I'll also add it to the comments so that you can easily go to that video so when you finish watching this go there and make sure you pay attention to the details that i'm explaining that is the problem of most people they watch these videos they just think that they just watch and they are not learning there is a difference between watching the videos and learning so when you are learning you are trying to understand what i'm saying don't focus on my grammatical error don't focus on the things that the mistakes that i'm making don't focus on me sweating on all of these things all of those other things right don't focus on oh the video is not professionally done and all sort of things these are distractions what i'm telling you focus on the message make sure you analyze what i'm saying and learn from the things that i'm saying and take the sense from what i'm saying then go and improve yourself so make sure your bio so i'm going to add a video that can help you walk through to have to optimize your profile i went in deep into that video because i wanted to show you step by step how you can optimize your profile so i'm going to add that video here i don't want to recreate that all over again next is your portfolio now how do you build a portfolio now a lot of people have sends messages to me oh please show us how to create a portfolio how do i create a portfolio i have explained this like countless times in many videos some videos i even went there and gave examples 
how you can create a video. But I know, I know most people, some of you that are watching me, you are some you are people that want to make it on 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 upper. So you are going to do the work. I am not going to create a portfolio for you because I don't know exactly which niche or which area or domain you are in. So the best thing I can do is to share with you strategies and also share some exam basic examples that you can pick from. If you are truly a learner, you can pick from those examples and go and improve yourself and set up a portfolio for yourself. So I've said it like countless times in my videos, but people still complain that, oh, can you make a video to explain how to create a portfolio? How do I create a portfolio? And all of that things. So some of these things, sometimes I feel, I feel discouraged a bit because I am expecting you guys to analyze my videos, not just watch these videos. These videos that I'm sending out there, they are gems. These are gold mines, guys. I'm giving you everything that I know because I don't want to deceive you. I don't want to make a fancy video tell you all sort of things at the end of the day i have not things that i don't that i don't i've never practiced what i'm telling you is things that i've practiced and they have worked that's why i'm giving you all of these facts so here is what you need to do if you are someone who is coming from nine to five or maybe you've been working one way you can strengthen your portfolio is to come with those projects all right, that you've worked on. So you are not limited. There are three options. You have the gallery, the classic, and there is another option, which is the case study approach. So for me, I normally use the case study. And what, what does the case study mean? So for a project, if I've worked on a project before, you are expected to, to indicate the goals of the project. What, what is the goal of that project that you are working on? So let's say I normally take the Excel um, sheet example because it's something that most people understand, right? Let's say I am given data, all right? Maybe the goal is for me to analyze the data and present it in a visual and produce um, a visual presentation of that data so that decision makers can easily get um, the out, understand the data and be able to make informed decision this is just a goal don't quote me on that goal this is just a goal that i came up with it does not make much sense but the idea is that you have to state a goal of the of the the, 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 the projects right second what is the solution what solution did you take right what did you so what did you do right how did you approach to, to solve now you have a goal how did you approach the problem you are solving that problem because the goal basically is like the problem. So how did you approach it? You can provide now the solution that this is what I did. First, I cleaned the data, which is identifying gaps on the data, filling those gaps, doing all of sort of, sort of things. So for data analysts, they know all of these processes. Second, I, 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 I move the data on, on my Google Sheets. Then um, you do, I do the manipulation, create these graphs and all of the things. Then I did a presentation. Then I create a board, a dashboard. Then you can show, as you can see, now you can reference that dashboard. See, you can now see the dashboard um, as a screenshot, which I created. So um, the executive chairman or maybe the executive CEO of the company or maybe the director or the managers, we are using this. Once I created this, this dashboard, I created a link, a shareable link, wherein they, we, we are able to access. You explain. That's what it means. So you explain. So now the next thing that is really important that you need to put on that description is your role. What role did you play? We are you the project manager. We are you the one who managed the project from scratch to finish, or we are you reporting to someone? What was your role? So the, some projects you have to put your role because there are many people working on the project, and your role has to explain what exactly you did. That's the point of the portfolio. You have to explain what you did on the project. So you have to give the goal of the project or what the project is about and then what, what was the solution. And then you have to explain what was your role. Now, it doesn't have to be a long essay. You just need to explain enough and provide pictures. Pictures can speak louder than voice. Now, for the next categories of people, this is for people that, this is just an example, a general example. But if you are coming from a nine to five, you've, you've, have your, you've gotten like a lot of experience you can you can you can just bring those projects and explain them if you are new and you have never worked on anything before maybe you are just coming from the university you don't have much experience now the next thing that you need to do is to manufacture a project maybe let me put it that way 
you have to come up with a project. Either you come up with a project or volunteer to someone that, please, um, I have this, I, I am a data entry expert. Can you please, can you please give me a project so that I can work on it? I can use that project as my portfolio. Or you can go and research, create a project for yourself. Do all the descriptions. Say, I um, need to create charts to do X, Y, and Z. You can Google this on just, just one line on Google can give you examples of Excel projects or, or projects in different domains. You create the project, then work on it from start to finish. Do exactly, and then use those screenshots. Then you take screenshots of whatever results that you get, that you've gotten. Use those. Now you can take screenshots of the results and then use those screenshots and put them on there as your proof that you know how to manipulate data. Now, it is not easy. This example of Excel is much more easier. But in a case wherein, if you are a product manager like myself, you have to build a product from scratch. Maybe you need to show requirements. You can still create a project for yourself. All right? If you can't do it, then this is where volunteering comes in. And I have talked about volunteering. There are strategies that you need to consider. So that's what I'm saying. You guys need to analyze my videos. It's not just, I don't just want you to just watch the video. I want you to analyze it, dissect it, try to understand some of the things that I'm explaining. Like I used to say, I am not a native English speaker. So therefore, some, some ideas that I want to relate to you, I struggle to explain them. But I, but I explain one thing over and over. That's why you see me explaining some, sometimes I explain one thing over and over because I want you to understand it. Because this is a mentorship. This is not like a professional video wherein I go, I try to make like these high-end videos. I don't believe in these high-end videos that have all of these. I'm not saying it's bad to do those things, right? There are people that are really spending time and effort to do high-end videos and they are providing content, quality content. But what I'm doing here is something rough, something that just helps you to understand the details that I'm trying to pass on to you. And then you can go and do the hard work of putting those pieces together so you understand what it is that you need to do to be successful. So guys, I really want to encourage you, don't just sit there and think that, okay, Jesse is going to give me everything. I'm going to explain to you the things that you need to do, but you need to dissect the videos. So if you are to watch this video two or three times, do it so that you can learn the basics. All right? Don't come back and ask me, oh, how to create a portfolio. No. You can do it. I've explained it multiple times. So if you don't understand this, come back and watch this video and watch the previous videos that I've created where I talked about portfolio creation. So let me don't waste time on that. So at this point, we are now going to my computer. I want to use my account to explain some of the things that we've talked about, identifying a niche and all of those things. All right. So give me um, a minute so that I can get there. All right, so I need to share my screen. All right, guys, so this is my, my account. I mean, my official account that I'm using on Upwork. So um, I guess you've seen this before. If you, are, if you are somebody who has subscribed to this channel and you've been watching my videos. So this is my account. As you can see here, I have searched for um, um, things like... Um, you can see my search results. So product management filter. So I have a filter here. So if I want to search for a data, a data, data entry job, all right, I can just add that like data entry. You can see it as an option. If I click on search, then I will have the results of data entry. Now, <clears throat> when you get to your account, just click on Upwork here. This Upwork, if you click there, then it will take you to this search um um here so now you can see data entry so here is some of the things that i was saying when it comes to you um selecting your niche you have to look you can even come to upwork here and see the different niches that are that are available so you can see that okay so maybe i need to go systematically the way i present the information so let's let's start let's start from the beginning all right so um all right so i need to create i need to create i think i need to create a new let me come okay let me begin from the beginning all right so let me go to upwork 
So now I'm using incognito because I want to go to upward. All right. So now we are here on Upwork. So if you are looking to select your niche, one way you can do it, the simplest way for you to start is for you to come here and look at these different um, categories. This is really helpful to kind of um, identify the niche where you belong or the things that you can do as a, as a, as a freelancer, guys. So I froze, I froze there for a second, sorry. So let me click on development and IT. This is a big category, it's a giant category on IT. So here you can see there are different trusted remote development and IT experts. Now you can see under the development and IT um, um, category, you can see different sets of um, um, freelancers. You can see Java developers, PHP developers. These are subcategories of that big category, which is the, the development and IT. So you can see infrastructure engineer, SQL engineer, data scientist. So you have multiple categories. So you can see more skills here. If you want to see more skills, you can see development and IT categories. So let me just zoom in there. All right. So we have development. We are still under development and, and IT rules. All right. Data analysts. You can see here data analyst rules. You can see core functional rules. .NET developers, Android developers, and so on. So you see the different um, areas that Upwork has already listed for you. So development and IT projects, right? AI and machine learning. So you see the different categories. So you have to, first of all, come here and do your research, all right? Come here and do your research to find out exactly which um, category you need to work on, all right? So let's go to AI services as another category because this is also like a big category now ai is a big area that you um, people are going into so if you are trying to start um, um you are trying to start your it area or maybe software development career ai is a big area that i think should be very interesting for you to, to jump into so here you can see you can get advice from consultants but you can see different people that have different skill sets for instance ai consultant and so on so let's see um freelancers hire the right freelancers this is a chatbot developer. This can tell you, see, the, the title. This is the headline. It's a chatbot developer, AI content creator, AI model developer. So you see different people. You can also look at different talents in this area. So now you can see the different talents. Now, look at what happens. When I clicked, what, what did I do? I clicked on the see um, all talents, right? So here you can see the different talents that are here. You can filter. You can filter by top rated, top rated plus rising talent. So you can see which one. But also you can go to see the jobs that are available in this area. Do you see? You can actually go and see the jobs. You can even come here and select a category. Which category you want to go into. All right? So you can see there are so many things that you can do to, to search. Because you have to do your research to see which categories have high demand now when you look at um jobs for ai you will see you will see the top categories here you can select let's say you want to see um top rated plus people so you can see data entry b2b lead generation so so this is like mixed up really it's not like focusing on ai alone but you can see all of these things but you now i have selected one filter now let's look at jobs all right let's look at jobs now when you when you look at jobs you see entry jobs you have this is about 17000 jobs if you can see there this they have entry jobs which are 17500 you have about 70000 jobs that are um um 70000 70, jobs that are over 70000 jobs that are intermediate expert you have 47000 so you can see there are so many jobs guys so many jobs there are so many jobs. So we are going into the details here. So what did I do? I just clicked on AI, right? I went from this AI tab, from this AI tab, and then I looked at more entries. I looked at more entries, then it took me to that category. I don't want to move away from what we are trying to do, the main focus here, all right? So now find trusted talent with the AI skills you need. Now, AI specialist, AI artist, AI chat, so you see the different categories here, as you can see, guys. So you just need to come here 
you search and then see what you are which area you have a speciality in and then use that to create your skill set all right so you have to have a category the specific category so when when you have listed the idea is basically when you have listed all the things that you can do now you need a category under which you want to put those skills all right so you can now come here and look at these categories that we have here to 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 put your skill set maybe you can have two or three categories and then you can create up to two or three specializations opoc allow actually allows you to be for instance for myself i can be a product management manage uh, a product manage, management specialist i can also be a project management specialist and i can be an agile team lead specialist so i can create like three profiles if i want i can even create a jira specialist because i know how to use jira i know how to configure it so i can use that as a specialist and that is also a role somebody can hire me as a jira specialist to manage their jira boards so you see what i'm saying so these are things that you can come here and see so let's come to the design yeah the design and creative if you click on design and creative you will see that the, you will see the different um, specializations that are available here. Specialized design and creative experts you can count on. Now you can you have UI UX designers, you have graphics designers, you have art directors, web designers, motion designers. So these are all specialists that are available. So even under the design category, you don't just call yourself I am a designer. Which type of designer are you? So you need now to come whether you are doing animation, you are doing video editing voice artists and so on you can see all of you can see more categories here if you click on see more skill sets and then you can look at you can come to the bottom and see the rules that are available 3d designers you have all the different tools that are available there so guys i don't need to go over all of these the most important thing that you need to understand is the rules and categories they are already here now the next thing is for you to determine which of these jobs that are in high demand all right that is really important how do you know that i've already i touched on that just now but i want to show you more so now let's go to administrate administration so now i'm going to click on this part which is admin and customer support so if i click on it let's see what that looks like all right by the way there are more um, um areas here so you can go here you see for instance administrative work you have like virtual assistant data entry specialist so let's say data entry specialist right so that's what we want to look for so what we need to do is you need to come to this see more this area see more so let's click on it it tells you it gives you all not that one i want more talent all right let's go no, no, no. that's the wrong one let's go let's go let's go let's go all right give me a minute okay I think this does not have that, so let's come to the AI here. So AI gives me that leverage to go and see more talent. So see talent, this one. So you can click on the AI tab, and then it takes you to the more talent area. So there, I'm being, I create a new tab, right? So here, on this particular tab, you can actually search for what you are looking for. If you are looking for a specific type of um, category, you can just search for it um at the top here or you can actually come to the jobs tab here now there are different categories here of search now you have um let me go in um so you have the talent badge um search you can select by talent badge you can come you can select by location maybe you are looking for someone um from so, so categories specifically for african americans or whatever country you are looking for you can come and search for it or you can come for talent type so freelancers and agencies whatever you are looking for you can search or you can come to the categories right so you can look at the categories are you looking for consulting um accounting and consulting admin support you can look at all the categories so you can search talent by talent or you can search by job now let me take a step back i'm moving very fast so i want to take a step back because i want you to understand we have selected talent here so the search is based whatever you select here what you are going to see on this left side is the talent because what we've selected here is talent based all right so when you select talent that's the time you see the badges all right so what you need to do next if you want to see jobs let's select on jobs 
now upwork is showing us the jobs sir. so now you see upwork profile optimization freelancer so somebody is looking for someone to optimize their upwork profile so as i can see as you can see guys like i, I normally tell you some of these things that i am providing for you some of this content that i'm providing for you is a gold mine as you can see somebody is paying they want somebody to optimize their profile so that they can stand out on upwork all right i can apply for this job and somebody can pay me and then i will do the job for them then i can have some money right but i'm providing this and um, content for you for free free of charge i'm not asking you to do anything unless um i'm now going to ask please if you have not done so please subscribe to the channel your subscription means a lot to the channel and also subscribe to our social media platform instagram facebook um, 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 TikTok, go and follow us. That can help the channel to grow, and I will be grateful. I, I'm going to give you a minute to do so. All right, thank you. I, I know you have done so. You are somebody, you are a good person. You're going to help us. All right, so let's come to jobs. Now, since I have selected jobs, what happens is that you will see the number of jobs. So if you are looking for an entry level category, just click on entry level. If you are looking for intermediates, you can look for that. But what we really want is to come to the categories, all right? So, to come to the, uh, okay, they are not showing us the categories here. Yeah? I think the freelancer category. So they are not showing us the categories here. Yeah? But you can see what is important here is the entry levels, the intermediate level, and the expert levels, right? So we can see that. And also you can select whether it's fixed or it is by hourly rate, right? You can just select like the range that you are currently looking for clients history whether they have history or not so as you can see we have thousands of clients guys there are so many clients on this on on this place so you can select whatever you want hours per week that you are looking for the job that you are looking for how what was the duration are you looking so for me normally my advice is for you to look for more than 30 hours per week so you can click that so all jobs that you are looking for will be more than 30 hours per week contract to hire yes i want that as well contract to hire means that the job can translate into a contract, a permanent job. Then let's look into something else. Okay, I have not selected a category. I'm going to select an entry category. So I'm going up. Now I've selected. Now if you look here on jobs, you can see the categories that I've selected. Those are the categories. You see more than, these are the things. So you can even clear this filter if you want. But I want to add something else. All right. I want to add a category. So I'm going to add an admin category here. So what I'm looking for is for administrative um, jobs. Then I want, I want um, data entry and transcription services. That's the specialization or the category that I want to show. So I'm going to click on it. So now, guys, now Upwork has done all the work for me. So by just selecting this, now I have these jobs. They have selected the job. They, they are entry-level jobs. And also I'm looking for talent that are within this particular category. So here is what you are going to look at um let me explain that again now when you are looking for jobs this is what you look for the job the kind of jobs that people are, are posting on the platform that are within your category if you are within like entry level you are going to look for that kind of job and then you can search for data entry then you'll be able to see the data entry jobs so you have to search search here for data entry let me just do that data entry if we, if we, if if i enter that then all the jobs that i'm going to show they will be more than 30 hours per week and they will be entry level jobs and they are also marked as contract to hire. So that's the jobs that I'm currently looking. So you can see everything is marked here, data entry. So simple typing and retyping documents, job available. So you see the budget there is $500, guys. This is $500. It's a fixed price, entry level. You see, estimated budget is what? $500. So you can apply for this. This job was just posted 18 minutes ago. So you can apply for a job like this. So this is how you search for jobs. So you come to your search bar, enter the job title that you are looking for. That is at the top here. Enter the job title. And then you, you come, you select jobs. Make sure you select your, what you are looking for, whether it's an entry. If you are looking for an entry level job, you select that one. And for this job that I just typed, data entry, there are 721 jobs that are currently available for this particular one. For intermediate, you have 1,561, and there are 866. So there are so many jobs, guys. 
So now you can come with the other filter that I put. I want more than 30 hours per week. And also I'm looking for concerts. So these are the filters that I put. So these are just things that are guiding, that are giving me, that are kind of sorting out the jobs for me, right? So step one, put the, 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 the job title that you are looking for. Step two, make sure you select the filters that you are looking for. And then you can see the jobs that, that are currently posted here that are, that are within your niche. Always check how long it has taken when the job has been posted. Look at this. You see that this is 55 minutes ago when this job was doing. It's an Excel sheet data typing. You see, Excel sheet data typing. You are paid $115 fixed price. It's an entry level job, right? Here is another one. Two hours ago, virtual assistants, remote, vet, vet, waiting. Veterans and military spouses, all right? This is another job. I don't know what this means, but it's a virtual assistant. Somebody, you can read the details there. Get hired to the Airbnb listing. So this is for you to list, to provide. So Airbnb is basically providing accommodation for people. So people have photos. They want to provide description for their properties on Airbnb. You can be somebody who is doing listing for these people. So this is what this job is about. And administrative assistant. Now note that, what I type is data entry, but I'm, they are showing me all of these other jobs that are related. They are very close. They are closely related to data entry, right? Because a virtual a data entry is under the category of um, 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 virtual assistant or virtual assistant or admin category. Data entry, virtual assistant, and all they are all under the admin category. So that's why you are seeing them showing me some of these jobs, giving me that suggestion. So if you are an admin assistant. You should be also have some amount of virtual assistant capacity to do some of this work, right? So get hired today to do data entry here. You can see um, the reason why they are showing these jobs. You can see that these jobs they have um, 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 the person has added data, data entry as some of the filters here for this job. So you see all of them are medical service care coordinator, but they have data entry something there. So that's why you see everything has been has been categorized so you can show as many as you want you can show up to 50 jobs if you want so this is how you look for jobs i'm moving very fast guys so let's look for the first let me just retrace the steps that we, we took so the first step is for you to come to this ai tab because this is where i think you can simply go to 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 find um the more talent this is one route then you can come to to the bottom here and click on talents then when you get there, the next thing that the first thing that you have to do is to click on jobs. When you click on jobs, then type the job that you are looking for. All right, data entry. Then what next? You you are going to make sure you do the filters. You select the filters that are that are appropriate to you, so you get to that point. All right. So this is one way that you actually can see how many jobs that are available within your category. You can see whether the, the, whether your category is in high demand. I've spent a lot of time explaining this. So let's move on to my account. So back to my account. So basically, if I'm looking for a data entry job, even though I am not a data entry person or I'm not a data entry clerk, I can still search for a job which is related to data entry. So how do I do that? I simply come here and, and type data entry at the top of that bar. I'll select that. All right. Uh, okay. It has selected data entry. As you can see, this is data entry there. So now it has given me the same filters that we, I just showed you. It has experience level. If I'm looking for entry level, I will just select that. That I want entry level. I can also come to the bottom here and say, um, I want this to be a six month plus. And uh, also I want a contract to hire. So that's what I'm looking for. So now let's see. This same job that I just saw that has been posted 23 minutes ago, I'm still seeing this job here right in my account this is my account as you can see this is my profile so this is how you search for job but if you just if you you've already gotten a job on the platform you can just create your own filter for me i have like this filter which is product management filter and software development filter so normally on my feed you see the share software development um, um 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 jobs to me but i can look at best match which also shows me um um um, um jobs that are project management or product management jobs all right GR consultants experts as i said this is also a specialization that i can add for myself 
I've recently posted. I can come and see all of these other jobs. All right. So now let's go to your profile. The next thing is is a profile. Now I've talked about creating your account, and then when you create your account, you need to have when you create your account. Actually, the process of creating your account actually helps you to create your profile. It's like the starting point of creating your profile. So this is why I'm showing you your profile. So as you can see. Um, your profile might not have um, some of this information. For instance, it will not have like the job success. It will not be have like a top rated. It will not have all of these statistics. But that does not matter. The, the important thing that you have to know here is I, was, I, I mentioned something about about the title of your your job title. All right. So as you can see, my title, my head, my headline is product manager, project manager, agile team lead. All right. This is my specialty. So I have given an headline that is very specific in three different domains. Project management, product management, and agile team lead. Because I don't want to create other specialization. I just wanted to maintain one specialization. All right. And again, the other thing is don't be tempted to because you see me put um $60 per hour as my rate. If you are a beginner, if you have the kind of experience that I have. Of course, you can put more than that. You can even put hundred and something dollars. But I've seen people that are freelancers that have not made a dime on the platform putting um two hundred dollars on on as a rate. That is really risky for you to do because nobody will want to hire you because you don't have any repetition on the platform. Why would somebody hire you? Now the next thing that I was talking about is bio, right? So for me, my bio, my bio data or what I've written about my bio is very. It follows a particular systematic way of laying out this information. I've laid out this information in a systematic way. All right. So the first thing is, I created like a short summary. Now here, I actually highlighted some key components, especially feedback that I've gotten that are really standing out. Feedback that's standing out. So as an up, as an up, I said as an up or top rated plus freelancer, I have served as a team lead for a portfolio of over 40 and i'm not lying so for the team lead rule if you look at one of the one of my rules that i've as a team lead this this um, um team lead for project managers here yeah. so this is one of the biggest jobs that i've gotten on this platform so i served as a team lead and i was managing like over 40 projects i mean software development projects i had like 12 um, um product managers working that, that i was working with all right so and also I provided like some examples of um, um, feedback that I've gotten, so somebody can clearly see um, my experience. If I can manage up to forty projects, it means managing one project should not should not be a problem for me. All right. Then the next thing is I also tell them like the client that I've worked with before. I need to update some of this information, but I show them the, the size of the client that I've worked that I've worked for before, so they can get the an idea of the size the level. Of clients that I've worked with. So if you don't have clients yet, you don't need to put that kind of information. Just say I am an experienced somebody. I have worked on specific things. The best way you can learn how to create or write your profile is to go and watch the talents. I showed you just now how to look at the profiles of other people. Look at their profile and study it. Once you understand it, then you can come now and create yours. All right? Simple. It's quite easy. So I showed you just now how to how to go to this talent right so once you go to the talent look at the talents here let's say i am looking for data entry let's i'm still going with data entry here so i'm looking for talents in data entry talent right? look at this man um he's kind of charging um, um 4.8 dollars per hour and he has 97 success, job success and he has made eighty thousand dollars can you imagine that so i'll just take a look at his profile I can open his profile to see how he has organized his profile. All right. So you can see the way he wrote his profile is very short, like data entry specialist, data entry specialist, web research, and so on. I am, he put his name and so on. So you can see all of his skills that he put. So you can study how these people have kind of set up their profile and then use that and create a method for yourself. I'm not saying you should go and copy that person. You can also go to the next go to the next and so on learn from what other people have they have already done and then create your own so you don't need to copy what i've done because the experience level is different the next thing that i i did on my profile is basically to share 
my experience, the areas where I have expertise. I don't want a client to come and hire me and misunderstand thinking that I am a developer. I'm not a developer. I have specific expertise that I know how to do. So I focus on that. I mentioned that. And also, I also tell them what I'm, I'm proud of. Like, if I'm working for you, this is what you need to expect. And why you must, you must choose me over others. So this, is, this might be like, these are strong words, right? Why you should hire me? Why you should take me over others? And also, I pull that, all right? So you can see also, um, on the other hand, I added some um, two portfolios, right? Two projects. This is actually lazy for me. Like, I'm just being lazy here. I've worked, with, I have worked on several projects. I have some amazing, even social media platforms that I've built. So I should be adding that. Maybe I need to edit. I need to really add this portfolio. So when it comes to portfolio, basically, I've explained everything. And I'm going to add a video that's going to say, I'll walk you through because I've gone through it. So I don't want to waste time. So you can see, guys, the, the whole thing here is I've explained everything that you need to know how to, first of all, create your account, optimize it, and make sure you do everything that you need to do to set yourself up for success. So I'm going to stop this. So guys, there you have it. Today, we've gone through all the nitty gritties of how to set yourself for success. I know there is loads of information and that's why my advice to you is you don't need to watch too many videos a day. Just watch one and make sure you dissect some of this information. I've given you loads of information. I've given you loads of tips because I'm doing it right here. Like I, this is not something that I, that, I, that I, I want you to see me making some of these mistakes but pay attention to the key things that you know that are really important to you and make sure you know them down and learn them. Go and implement what I've said so that the next time we see, it will be day three. And then you are prepared for day three for what is coming. And I promise you, there is going to be exciting things. So if you watch up to this level, I want you to comment day three. It means you are expecting day three. Thank you very much for watching and see you on the next one.